Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm Laura Oswald, Director of Marketing at the Paducah Visitors Bureau. Today, we have Kristen Williams, the visionary artist and creative force behind Ephemera Paducah. And we can't wait for her to share all about her wonderful creative space, a mixed media workshop space in the Lower Town Arts District. Welcome, Kristen. Thanks, Laura. It is fantastic to be here. Yes, and we have some great things to share about. Mm -hmm. You've had some wonderful activities um, all year round, really. Um, yep. And we have so much to share um, with our viewers who may or may not be familiar with Ephemera yet. Sure. Um, Ephemera Paducah. First, we probably have to describe the name because yes. it is a funny word, but it is an arts and craft workshop space for adults. I'm on the corner of 9th and Madison in Paducah's Lower Town Arts District. And ephemera came about, is, it is a word that means uh, pieces of paper or memorabilia, things that were meant to be thrown away that were saved. And the reason I chose that word is about 15 years ago, I had this urge to go to art and craft workshops. Um, and the ones that I could find that fit my style, and I love mixed media, um, were far away. Portland, Oregon, Las Vegas, Petaluma, California. And on every supply list for those workshops is the word ephemera. So that's, that's the word to catch the interest of those people who, like me, were traveling to take workshops and Paducah because it just sounded so cool together. It does. So it's a, we've got about 2,500 square feet of space. We have a small retail part in the front that supports the workshops, but we're primarily a workshop space. Yeah, and, and you did have a vision for this quite a while before the business actually began, um, and you were taking workshops. Tell us a bit more about your background and how you yeah. transitioned to this new world. That, it, that's a great question, and one I love to tell. My mother was the most creative person I've ever known. And she could do anything with her hands. She had gardens and cooking and she could knit a sweater in three days and just anything she touched she made beautiful. And that was instilled in me from a very young age. And because of my mother and my Aunt Alice and some other very important folks to me, I, I have always made things. And as a child I could wheedle a loom kit to make a pot holder out of my mom but not another doll. So it was just an interesting thing. We, books and crafts and things that, that were productive was what she supported. So that always instilled in me a, just a, a need to create and express myself artistically. But I always had a real job. And I would not let myself do that until my work was done. It's kind of like you don't get dessert until you finish your dinner. So it would almost build up and explode. Um, so I always had this creative side. And you coupled that with my background, which was in economic development. I worked at Chambers, Chambers of Commerce. I was a consultant for many years where I worked with communities and helped them become more attractive to businesses and, and create economic impact, much like the Paducah Visitors Bureau does. And I, um, I started going to these art retreats. And the first one I went to, I enjoyed so much the, what I learned the hospitality side of it was rather cold. We were in a hotel, there were no activities after class. I was there by myself for a week. It was in Portland, Oregon, which is kind of a big intimidating city. And while I was there, I, the wheels just started turning. And I looked around the room and most of the attendees were women about my age or a little older. This was 10 years ago, so my age now. And I started thinking, oh, you know, with the success of the annual quilt week and now the biannual quilt week, mm -hmm. could something like this work in Paducah? And in the meantime, I was doing, it, I kept doing my work and then I would take off for these retreats and that's where I would get my artistic infusion. And the more I thought about it, the more it just made sense. And then I was turning 50 and I was driving somewhere and I was really bored. I mean, if you can imagine strategic planning got a little old, I was doing a lot of meeting facilitation and plans and that got a little lonely because you're with your clients about 5% of the time. They're at the time you're on a computer. And I was 
feeling just blah and not excited about turning 50 and I thought, well, how do I get excited about this? And I had dreamt about this and planned it in my head and thought about it a long time and I thought, well, I just need, I just need to pull the trigger and do it. So with the support of my wonderful husband, we decided, sure, let's launch into this. And it just made 50 turning fantastic and the 50s rock. So I opened April um, 2013. Wow. It's been, yeah, it's been a good ride. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, that, all of that background leading you up to this, I think that, um, you know, when we t think about the modern economy, this is sort of just a side trip, mm -hmm. um, thinking about the modern economy and people in economic development, thinking about creativity being such right. a key skill. Um, I think it's, an, that's an interesting background. I love background that STEM that, is now yes, STEAM, right? right? STEAM stands for the arts, yes. I think. So that's, yeah, yeah, yeah I think you're so right. You're really, um, fostering that in all ages through what you're doing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, so speaking of all ages um, and all types of people, you, you talked about some of the retreats you went on um, and some of the experiences you had. What are the experiences that you've developed at Ephemera that you're offering? We, um, it, it, there's an array of classes that we offer. And again, we, I, there's a, some great places in town for kid programs mm -hmm. and I just, I just, I stick to adults because I think adults need a respite too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I've got, that's my wheelhouse right there. Mm -hmm. But we have um, one of our most popular classes, Gay Brewer, who's a, a local. She's done the beautiful stained glass at Cynthia's and um, Made Nally Cinema. She, her class always sells out. We have an introduction to stained glass and then an intermediate stained glass class. And that's a small class of about six people. And that's going on right now. Awesome. I will teach things like art journaling, Bible mm -hmm. journaling, jelly plate printing. Um, I love embroidery and just doing, mixed media means more than, in my very simple, uh, very simple definition, more than one product that you're mm -hmm. using in your art. So when I do embroidery, I'll add, buttons and old pictures and all kinds of stuff so kind of freestyle and um, those are some things that I teach I'll next year I'll be doing some more regular clubs like we did when mm -hmm. I first opened up at this year I kind of took that off and then the the core of the business though is bringing in these national teaching instructors and these are the people I travel to teach and as in, in any hobby there are people who emerge as rock stars right. And in my world, those are the people who have product lines or are featured guests in magazines like uh, Somerset Studio and Cloth Paper Scissors. Mm -hmm. And with my economic development background, when I used to be recruiting industries, I, w I was never shy to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, do you want to come here and teach? And so that's what I've done for the past mm -hmm. five years. So we have the, the cream of the crop teachers coming in. Um, to teach anything from, we had Susan Leonard Kasmer, um, who has uh, just unbelievable products and makes gorgeous jewelry. Mary Beth Shaw has taught a number mm -hmm. of times and she's the owner of Stencil Girl Products and who we, I partnered with on the retreat that we held in last September. Seth Apter is just mm -hmm. this sweet, sweet guy from New York and he's been here a number of times. And uh, Dina Wakeley is, just a, someone who people adore, and I've had her, she's coming back, Jody Old. Mm -hmm. So these are names that I'm probably boring half your, <laughs> but if you know, if you're in this world, they're right. like, oh my gosh, we have those people coming to Paducah. And, and people are taking note, people are coming from it's within amazing. the region and out. So I, that's, that's the one thing that surprised me, mm -hmm. because I, everyone, I guess, is in their own headspace, and I thought, well, gosh, if I have these teachers here, then wow, what what I'm doing for my community? And in reality, not everybody likes mixed media, but there, um, I do have some very uh, dedicated local mm -hmm. customers. They only represent about five percent of the people who take my classes. Mm -hmm. So, for any any workshop, ninety five percent of the people are coming in from at least three hours away. Mm -hmm. And some, I've had someone drive from Canada, like me, when I was flying to Oregon, I've had people come from Oregon to here. And I think there's, there's good reasons for that. The, the teachers have a following and they draw that crowd, but Paducah is also a very easy, very safe place to come to. It's, mm -hmm. not, in, it's not an intimidating city to manage. 
And if you're a single woman in her 50s and 60s traveling alone, that's important. You want to be able to get around in a car easily. You want to be able to find the place. And then they come here and they're blown away by the cool factor because they don't realize, if they've never been here, I love taking instructors around town and taking them to the freight house and sitting at the bar and going, yeah, we've got this here. That's and right. and they, they're just blown away. And so it, you do a great job of that. Well, I'm proud of my community. I am. And it, Paducah helps sell mm -hmm. what I've got going on. The right. You know, just the national reputation. People know us as an artsy place with the UNESCO designation and the quilt museum and Hancock's and right. all that. So. Um, people love coming here for the, for the classes. And, and we see on the tourism side, mm -hmm. you know, what drives someone to decide that they will come to Paducah. Mm -hmm. um, it may be the National Quilt Museum. Um, it may be a creative experience mm -hmm. like this. You yes. know, this is their reason to visit. And um, then to be able to connect them to all of the other things, um, to Freight House, to Kirchhoff's, to mm -hmm. the culinary, yeah. to the other experiences that they may not expect. And they sort of become ambassadors for Paducah. Exactly. And how simple oh, yeah. it was to transfer from the Lower Town Arts District for the classes right downtown. Exactly, um, yeah. It's really wonderful. So we, we commend you for what you're oh, well, doing. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased, yeah. And we definitely want to talk about a really special um, retreat that you had recently. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Yeah. Tell, tell us about it. I know it sold out immediately <laughs> once it, did. it was posted. So um, I, the other unintended, or I, I didn't anticipate having this whole new world of, uh, naively I didn't anticipate, the, of friends and colleagues and people that are as passionate about mixed media and classes and workshops as I am. And I've come to have a dear, very dear friend in, in Mary Beth Shaw who a, a little earlier than me started her company, Stencil mm -hmm. Girl Products. And stencils are, I guess we all understand stencils as the thing that you, I used it to put ducks on a wall one time. Right. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> so she was frustrated because she liked to use stencils in her artwork mm -hmm. and there were just not real interesting ones. And she's an artist and she did the, um, oh gosh, the art show circuit for mm -hmm. a long, long time. And copyright became an issue as well. You don't want to use somebody else's, you don't want recognizable or use somebody else's art in your art. So she developed a few stencils and then she recruited artists to design stencils mm -hmm. and they're all um, under the angel policy so you can use them in your artwork. And they're just fantastic. They're beautiful, they're durable, and in any kind of mixed media, they're very appropriate and, and really help punch up what you're doing. So she and I had talked about uh, having a retreat, a little, a, a mini retreat. And she has a very loyal following, and I've got a loyal following now. And we put together four of these rock star instructors, Mary Beth, Pam Carricker, Seth Apter, and Tracy Batista, mm -hmm. to come to Paducah. We organized, um, we worked with the new Holiday Inn space, Great. which was beautiful, and we launched this retreat, and we opened up registration on about a year ago, November the 7th, on a Monday morning at 8 o'clock, and we had 50 spots. Yeah. And I assumed we would sell out at some point in the year. I had money for marketing that I was ready to spend. And about 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm getting notices from my website host that the server's about to crash. <laughs> so I call Nikki Mae, help, help. And within four hours, we sold out. Wow. And then I kept a wait list for 36 hours. But when it got to 65 names, I thought that really wasn't fair to continue to help people on the wait list. So we realized we had something very special. And it, we just, that kicked us into, let's make sure this is, experience is as wonderful and seamless and special for these folks who came to town. So we had, we knew we had two days of classes, a half a day of instruction from each class. We used the um, MySpace and then also the beautiful workshop space in the Paducah School of Art and Design, which blew people away. Mm -hmm. Uh, my teachers who taught over there said it was the most beautiful space they ever taught in. They loved it. Wow. And people love being in those creative spaces doing something creative. A lot of times you're in a hotel room with the right. plastic on the table and the low ceilings and no ventilation and this was just wonderful. But we had an opening reception which we thank you all for your sponsorship yes. of that. We um, had 
goodie bags galore, door prizes, and great food. It was just a wonderful event. People really enjoyed it. And so now we're analyzing the data, of course. We got feedback yes. on the event and wondering how we could um, do that and keep that intimate feel. Mm -hmm. um, and also, what's, what was very interesting about it, because with social media, I don't know if you're at any groups on Facebook, but there's the Stencil Girl group, there's the Stencil Girl Club group, there's so you know people from interacting virtually. Right. And it was so nice to put real people behind those profiles. Sure. And that was the it just the neat thing that came out of the comments that this building this real community, not just a virtual community. And I think people I think that's why real life workshops work. I don't I don't learn well. I'm not a very disciplined person taking through a video series right. and there's so much instruction out there, but that sense of community. And I think that's why people want to come to a place and hang out together and laugh and create right. and do that. Right. And you did such a good job of creating that. I mean, with all of your events, but with this Stencil Girl Retreat, specifically mm -hmm. having those four key teachers, mm -hmm. the great spaces. And you mentioned the School of Art and Design, which is actually kind of right next right door. Right next door. Oh, so yeah. So how convenient to, to be able to kind of expand in the Arts District like that. It was. And let people see that. Mm -hmm. And then I love the proximity of the hotel to my space. Yes. That worked out great. Um, we also had um, early bird classes mm -hmm. that I think you've got some footage of, of uh, I think Nancy Curry is mm -hmm. teaching um, a neat method. National Geographics and Citrusol do this wonderful thing. It's just fantastic. And then I think stitching. So, and that was in uh, the loft, which is the space yes. over my shop. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, you talk about potentially replicating this in the future. What else is coming up for Ephemera or what should people look for? You know, we've, we've talked a lot about these national instructors, mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, someone may think I'm not in that circle. I'm not in that circle yet, but um, there's opportunity to get connected to there, art oh, there at is. Ephemera. So yes, I've got um, ephemerapaduka.com. Mm -hmm. If you stay on my email list, which comes out, I do not spam, it's about once a month. Yes. <laughs> um, but there, there are local classes all the time. I also use the, the great talent in, in Lower Town and in Paducah mm -hmm. to help teach as well. So look for, for classes and events. The, um, I mentioned the loft, which is a space, mm -hmm. when we bought the building in Lower Town, it was, I call myself a second generation artist relocation person. We bought it from a couple who had built it in 2007 and it was their home. And they just moved out to the county. They wanted a different life experience after, after being more urban artists. So uh, there's a beautiful 2,500 square foot apartment. Mm -hmm. And for the first number of years we had the business, we had long-term tenants with the goal looking towards retreat space. And so that's where we are now. This year I furnished it. Um, we are on Airbnb, and what makes it really nice is when I have these out-of-town teachers coming in and students, some of them can stay there. But what I'm really focusing on next year, in addition to that, is many retreats. Awesome. So it can sleep, if you're good friends, it can sleep eight. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a bigger than that, there's great spaces, the Holiday Inn or other mm -hmm. B&Bs in, in Lower Town. And to put together you know, gather seven of your girlfriends and we'll do some art journaling and then go play downtown right. and then go shop and then come back and hang out all night and just con continue artistic endeavors. So that's one thing that I'm looking at, or what, not looking at, that's one thing we're doing next year. And we've gotten some, mm -hmm. some good interest in that. That's awesome. That kind of takes the girls' night out, paint and sift or something yeah, like that to the next level. It really does. It's if you wanted an immersive weekend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my students do, um, my student, it, if you're at all, what I tell people, if you see something on the website um, that you're interested mm -hmm. in, then you should do it. If you're, if you're inclined towards it, my teachers are very good teachers mm -hmm. and they always will teach different skill levels. And if there's something you need to know how to do before taking a class, then they will tell you. Mm -hmm. Next year we have some fantastic things coming up. Uh, mosaics, which we haven't done before. Uh, I've got a teacher named Jeffrey Gorman coming in who does these fantastic sculptures. I, I have to cool. buy some new big like table saws and stuff for the class and longer classes. I've got some mm -hmm. four and five day classes wow. coming up next year as well. Um, but the 
some of the photographs that I've got up there, they just make me drool to see these types of animals and things that you're going to make. How very cool very funky, mm -hmm. not your typical sculptures using found objects like, you know, license plates for wings and things yeah. like that. And um, some art journaling, some encaustic, which is painting with wax, and um, acrylic painting on a large scale, like on a 30 by 30 canvas wow. um, abstract painting. And then a, a couple of textile artists next year, I've got uh, Charlie Petricolo, who's a doll maker. Cool. Um, she's taught at Berea and John C. Campbell, okay. and also Judy Coates Perez, who is um, will be doing a lot of mixed media applications to fabric, awesome. and then turn those into prayer flags, which I love. Awesome. So yeah, we've got an array of things coming up next year. Yeah, and I will second. Definitely check out the website and see if there's something that stands out to you. I've taken a couple of you classes. You have. You've done great. And, yeah. and you know, um, you really you focus on the everyday artist. I don't <laughs> think you should feel like, oh, I'm not creative. If you oh, get in there, yeah. you will feel um, inspired and empowered and feel that sense of community and, and creativity for sure. Half of it is just knowing how to use the products. Yes. It's, you know, the, the products work with you, not against you. Yes. And once you can do that, you can really achieve some neat results on any kind of skill level going into it. So yes. it, you just, and it's hard to keep up with all the stuff that's out there if it's not your world. So, right. yeah. Right. Well, um, you have actually one of your art journals with I you. I do. I do. And this is a special art journal that you um, did over a period of time and you have shared actually with some publications. I did. So the there's a, a publishing house called Stampington and Company that does a lot of beautiful magazines related to uh, making dolls or jewelry or mixed media or one in particular my my love these days is art journaling yes. and so this is my 2015 journal and you're like why is this you know why is this a thing well what it is is you can learn I don't know if I, how where I should hold this or yeah. <laughs> what I should do but anyway it teaches you different techniques, which then you could take to an acrylic painting, mm -hmm. or it also just satisfies that urge to create right. in a neat and handy form. But I submitted, this is my 2015 journal, and I submitted it to Art Journal Magazine, mm -hmm. um, which is a Stampington publication, and it got published. Yes. So I love it. I sent this in, and there's still the little sticky notes in there of which pictures they decided to, mm -hmm. to use. But this is an unintimidating way to make art every day. No right. one has to see it. You're not hanging it on a wall. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can use it to go, well, how does this product work? Well, how does that do? And um, it was just, I don't know, it was, it was a goal that I set. Yeah, here, look, we're how gonna have that one, yes. <laughs> but it was a goal that I set to challenge myself to send it in. Yes. And there was a very nice article and it's hanging on my wall. And of course, it. as yeah. it should be. We love seeing our <laughs> local artists and um, cultural entities getting some recognition like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that, again, everyday artists, that is a it hashtag that you use. It is. I, I, we are the everyday artists. So the people that, um, you know, if you've got that urge, like I said, I, for the longest time, I would not let myself make time to do that. I had to make mm -hmm. it a special event and travel far away. Right. I had to make it my job in order to do it every day, which was fantastic. Yes. So um, a lot of my students either want to be everyday artists or try to create on a, on a regular basis. So that's who I cater to. Yes, well, we definitely encourage everyone to check out your website, see what's mm -hmm. coming up. Um, and why, you know, someone that maybe hasn't created before, what would you say to them? Why should they get involved um, in what Ephemera is doing? I think it's, um, people get so busy and it, and they, I, women in particular and moms in particular, and they get so busy and they take care of everyone else first. Mm -hmm. And I think every now and then you just gotta put yourself first and, and feed that creative spirit that you have. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that everyone was born creative. Absolutely everyone. And I love to, when I have a class or I'm starting off with a group, um, I did a, a Bible journaling workshop on site mm -hmm. on Saturday. And number one on my list is you cannot sit there and let that self-talk of, I'm not an artist. Oh, I'm not an artist. Right. You were creative when you were born. At some point, somebody stepped on that 
At some point, somebody made fun of a painting that you made. At some point, some teacher made you color within the lines when you were really kind of doing something cool outside of the lines. And I think we can hearken back to that. And the more you can tap into that and be that kid who runs home and wants to stick the, you know, stick your drawing on the refrigerator, that's what I want, you, the experience I want you to have at Ephemera Paducah. And whether that's on a coloring night when mm -hmm. we color between the wines or in a five-day sculpture class or um, weekly for six weeks in a stained glass class. I want you to find that and tap into that mm -hmm. because I think it's part of who we are as humans. I mean, you look at cave drawings and things like that. That's just who we are. Right. So and what a great place and space to be part of that and mm -hmm. connect with your own creativity. Well, and find your creative peeps. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like I said, that's been something that's been fantastic for yeah. me is this whole new real world community, not just mm -hmm. virtual community. Right. Right. So. And you are just, um, once again, we do want to say you're right there in the Lower Town Arts District, mm -hmm. um, which there has been so much creating in that neighborhood for years. There have been hands-on experiences, but Ephemera is really kind of carrying that banner of having the, mm -hmm. the hands-on creative experiences um, right. regularly. So um, definitely want to invite everyone yes, to... Yes, 333 North 9th Street. We, um, every month, I. It's as any small business. It's difficult to figure out what it, what works and what doesn't work. Um, this year, I've done something where I just publish every month on Facebook, on my website, and on my front door the the time that the retail hours will be open. Um, next year, I've gotten to the point where I'm hiring. I've got someone who's going to help me, and we will be open six uh, five days a week, Great. Tuesday through Saturday, steady hours. I promise because I, I'm getting more. In, more and more folks I've advertised nationally in Stampington and some um, mm -hmm. in these magazines and it, if you've if you're any kind of hobbyist my husband collects coins if you're married to someone who um, I don't know antiquers or me and my peeps we will look for craft stores and pull right. off the interstate and come shop. And at least once a month, somebody's pulling off the interstate yes. and coming up and being disappointed because I'm not open. So I've got to stop that. Yeah. Well, well, we encourage everyone locally and everyone outside mm -hmm. that's watching today to stop by Ephemera, um, check out the website, check see what's out the coming website. up. Yep. Um, thank you, Kristen, for hey, being with us Hey, thank you. Today. And thanks for all you guys do. You really make, you are, uh, I get so many referrals from your website, so wow. thank you. Well, we thank you for being such a great visitor industry partner and welcoming so many creative people to Paducah. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on Tourism Talk. Um, do check out Ephemera Paducah um, and visit our website, paducah.travel. You'll see all the great creative experiences mm -hmm. throughout our community, many of those that we talked about today. Um, and really take a moment to connect with your creativity and see all that our creative city has to offer you. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. One, two, one, two, go. Hello. <laughs>